our shoots, we spend a lot of time on the water, so we spend a lot of time traveling on boats. And often you just have to make do with what is there. And local expertise is actually very important. In Cambodia, the boatman, I use that term very loosely, uh, responsible for the crew, on one occasion turned out to be a nine-year-old boy. Okay, I mean, people sort of have this idea about boats. It, it's something you mess around with on the weekend. But on the Mekong River, that's a, you know, that's a treacherous waterway. The boats are quite tippy. They've got only a few inches of freeboard. You need to really know what you're doing. Uh, but he was very good. You know, these, these people, they grow up on the water. My personal transport at the big lake, Tonle Sap, was a very picturesque boat, but that thing was a real challenge to operate. I had to operate it myself because there wasn't room for anybody else. People in Cambodia tend to be smaller than myself, so this boat is it's not very stable. It's got an automobile engine fairly near the back. This engine has all sorts of moving, whir whirling parts uh, very, very close to me, also very hot. It's, I mean, I could just go on and on about this thing, but at, at one point, I was sent off just to get some footage, my sort of point of view footage. So we put a miniature camera in this boat, one pointing forward, one pointing back and I just went driving around amongst all these uh, floating houses. Everything was going fine until the prop fouled on a, on a piece of discarded net so suddenly I grind to a halt. Luckily I had my knife with me so I'm cutting the bits of the net off. The water, uh, there's all sorts of rubbish in the water. I'm worried about puffer fish coming in and biting me. Eventually an old woman living in a floating house took pity on me, came out, helped me free the, the prop which was great. The thing is, then I have to restart the thing. I'd always had somebody else to start this for me. I have to stand straddling the motor, and every time I try, it backfires, it never starts. What I should have done at this point is actually call up the crew on, on, on my radio, you know, come and help me, but of course, I didn't have it with me. So I'm, so I'm still trying to start this thing. About half an hour later, when the crew who've been searching for me saw somebody struggling in the distance trying to start this boat. You know, the thing is, in a situation like that, it's always tempting to turn the little camera off. But I always know that from the director's point of view, those are moments of pure gold, you know. So it's like, oh, you know, I'm, I, you know, I'm, just, I'm just feeling so humiliated. I want to turn that camera off, but no, they, you know, they're just going to love this so much. I have to keep it running as things get worse and worse and worse.